For the last two months, a small group of ranchers have been gathering at the base of this butte in western South Dakota. And here with Dr. Philip Bjork from the South Dakota School of Mines and Technology, they make a careful walk up the side of the butte to this spot where the Tyrannosaurus rex was found. It was the discovery of this tooth that confirmed that the skeleton was indeed that of a Tyrannosaurus. To date, most of the skull, part of the backbone, and several ribs, now protected by this plaster covering, have been excavated. The chief reason it's exciting is that Tyrannosaurus rex is an extremely rare animal. There have been only four, maybe five, skulls associated with skeletons found in all of the U.S. and Canada. I'm especially happy because this is the, perhaps the most recognizable dinosaur of all. That's what makes it really interesting. The Tyrannosaurus rex was the king of the dinosaurs during the period in which he lived. That's for sure. It, when you're 40 feet long with a four foot skull and teeth that are six inches long, there isn't anything else that's gonna challenge you. Hollywood has long been capitalizing upon the fascination with dinosaurs. This 1920s movie was one of the first of a long chain of films depicting the dinosaur age. And here the Tyrannosaurus Rex is shown dominating his kingdom millions of years ago. Back to the present. More of the rare discovery remains locked behind clay soil on this butte. Excavation will soon be halted for the winter, and it will be next year before they know exactly how much of the skeleton remains intact. Meanwhile, the dig is the talk of the town, and local residents are making sure the exact location remains a secret to keep it from being disturbed. After all of the existing skeleton has been unearthed, it will be reconstructed and placed on display at the School of Mines in Rapid City. The find that has been made here has certainly captured the imagination of the people who live in this section of South Dakota. And imagine, if you will, the entire upper Midwest, including Minnesota, some 65 million years ago. It is not a land of gently rolling hills and fields as it is today, but rather a land of swamps and deep forests. And the Tyrannosaurus rex discovery made here is once again proof that the largest animals ever to walk the face of the earth once lived in our section of the world. I'm Dave Andrews, Channel 5 Eyewitness News, near Mud Butte, South Dakota. Most of us wouldn't walk across the street to visit the Greif Brothers barrel making plant in St. Paul or do any more than drive over the Mendota Bridge or come a full 1,500 miles to visit the world's cream of wheat supplier. For 150 members of the Society for Industrial Archaeology, these are all digs, a chance to satisfy a consuming interest in the history of technology. As Smithsonian curator Robert Vogel explains it, archaeology is one way to study history remains aren't necessarily underground. The older the remain, <clears throat> the greater the chance is that it is underground. But the remains of fairly recent enterprises and industries tend to be above ground. And as a result, are much more interesting and much more complete. Okay. Rife Brothers Management only half jokes that wooden barrels first took shape in the time of Christ, and this machinery is only slightly newer. But that suits the SIA just fine. It's a bit unfortunate to see that some of the need for the barrels of this we call a novelty need, barrels uh, for nostalgic reasons. But nevertheless, that means that barrels have to be made, and uh, if it keeps the industry alive, that's fine. It may be hard to justify for people who think of it as a, a dead entity, but if you are immersed in it as we are, I think you find that it's a continuum. To prove the point, society members say they're just as interested in the water that powers the Ford plant assembly line as they are in the assembly line itself. After all, according to one member, Today's state-of-the-art technology is tomorrow's archaeological dig. This is Marcia Fleur, Channel 5 Eyewitness News in St. Paul.